Hello and welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's matchup between the Allen East Mustangs and the Bluffton Pirates. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, we get things kicked off on the road to Dane tonight with tonight's sectional semifinal in what is an NWC rematch. Nate, it's great to be your wingman tonight. Hello, high school basketball fans. As you said, we're at the Elida Fieldhouse. It's February. It's tournament time. Best time of the year. And let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first for the Bluffton Pirates. For Bluffton, they need to seek comfortability right off the bat. They only have one senior on the roster in Carson Soper. The four sophomores and two juniors that will see the majority of floor time will need to keep the excitement and anxiety that comes from a tournament atmosphere from getting to them. And then hit overdrive. What's the best way to find that comfortability? Attack, 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 especially in the half-court offense. Bluffton utilizes a dribble drive offense to get to the basket or find the open man when help presents itself. The Pirates need to get into their offense and find some buckets early in the game in order to address their overall lack of tournament experience. These are conference foes very familiar with one another. What do the Mustangs got to do tonight to come away with the victory? They want to push the pace. When this Mustang team is able to dictate tempo and push the ball, they find a rhythm that enables them to put a lot of points on the board in a hurry against any opponent. Success on the defensive boards with a quick outlet will be imperative in trying to get Bluffton on their heels. And then sweet revenge, you said their conference foes, Nate. The Mustangs have the opportunity to dry dock the Pirates after what they feel was the game they let slip out of their corral just 12 days ago when Bluffton came from nine down in the fourth quarter to post a 61-54 victory. Fundamental basketball for a complete four quarters will put them in a position to even the score with the Pirates and move on. It is the greatest time of the year, and there is no place that I would rather be than here tonight at the Fieldhouse to watch the road to Dayton get underway. Don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll have tonight's starters and the opening tip. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSA. Hello and welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's sem uh, sectional semifinal between the Allianz Mustangs and the Bluffton Pirates. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Stites Grocery. Stop into Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full service meat and deli. Having a large event, Stites also caters. Give us a call. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. Tonight's starters are being announced. We will take a look at those as well, starting first for the Bluffton Pirates. They're going to start number three, Wade Ginther, number five, Landon Wooster, number 32, John Paul Yoder, number two, Carson Soper, number zero, Merrick Donaldson. Taking a look at the Allen East Mustang starting five, it looks like this, number three, Carson Klum, number 11, Caleb Hopkins, number 23, Keaton Miller, number one, Jacob Hershberger, and number four, Keaton Lehman. Taking a look at tonight's officials, Ben Kramer, Scott Malk, Michael Basinger. As you can see, a little bit closer look of the Bluffton bench as they get through the end of their starters for tonight. And Dave, we talked about, you know, in the pregame, it's the second season. Everybody's hopeful, you know, it doesn't matter how that regular season went. All that matters is that you're playing your best basketball right now. And all up and down the bracket, no matter what division, what side you're looking on, there are going to be upsets and there are going to be teams that can make a run. And both of these teams tonight hope that they're one of them. Absolutely. You're 0-0 zero zero, uh, starting tournament action. And you, we have two evenly matched teams tonight. Allen East, the five seed. Bluffton, the six seed. Both teams have an overall record of 14-8 and eight, finishing up the regular season. Bluffton finished third in the Nor Northwest conference and Allen East six so great night for semifinal action I asked both coaches what was your best win of the season for Bluffton it was against Allen East they were down 12 in the third quarter down nine at the beginning of the fourth and came back and won so a little revenge time as we talked about Allen East gets the tip let's play some hoops we are underway that opening tip will be controlled by the Mustangs as they come down so Keaton Lehman with the basketball, moves it around the perimeter. Early dribble drive, going to drop it off into the middle. Keaton Miller can't get that one to go as it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Allen East. Nice ball movement for Allen East right there. Good hands to knock it out of bounds by the Pirates, giving up a clean look early on, but Allen East maintains possession. Tried to go for a lob back inside to 
Keaton Miller. That one's going to get knocked away. And here comes Bluffton on their first possession. Here's Carson Soper. Moves it around in the hands of Merrick Donaldson. Bluffton's going to be patient on offense because Alanese wants up tempo. They're going to make them work very, very hard at it. Uh, to get the basketball in their last game, Allen East, uh, second to last game, they fell to Columbus Grove, and Columbus Grove really slowed the pace down, and I'm sure Coach Boblin took a hard look at that game film. So we're going to have a couple of quick whistles here. First, it went on Allen East as Keaton Miller picked up his first foul and then immediately an offensive foul as that one's going to go on Merrick Donaldson. It's the first for both players and the first for both teams. So you have the turnover there, but it is a dead ball turnover, so Bluffton can get back and set their defense. Miller left all alone at the top of the key, gets it to go down. Three-point shot for Keaton Miller. Keaton Miller shoots 31% behind the arc, nails that one, gives the Mustangs the 3-0 lead, first bucket of the game. Bluffton trying to come down, see if they can answer. Drive right around the free throw line. That one's going to be no good. Landon Wooster couldn't connect. Offensive rebound came down to the Pirates. So, again, as we said, one of our game keys, Bluffton getting comfortable. Only one senior out there in Carson Soper. Best way to get comfortable is work the ball from side to side on offense. Kick out here is Soper for the three-point try. No good. As you see Wooser come up with the rebound, another three-pointer on this way, and this one's good. Merrick Donaldson with an answer, ties this one at three. Merrick, Merrick Donaldson second on the team in three-point percentage, 39% behind the arc. Nails that one, as you said, all knotted up. Donaldson also the leading scorer for this team, averaging over 13 points a game. Bluffton's going to look for a big game out of him tonight. Here's Lehman, the first team NWC player. He's going to kick it off for the assist as Caleb Hopkins knocks down the three-pointers. Both teams right now very comfortable behind the line. That was the word I was thinking of exactly, Nate. Comfortable. Caleb Hopkins, a 26% shooter from behind the arc, but nailed that one. Another three-pointer. That one's going to be off the side of the rim. Going to go out of bounds. Allen needs to get the basketball back. 5.38 left to go here in the opening quarter. Allen East with the three-point lead here in the early going. No transition uh, basketball thus far. Half-court set for both teams. Hershberger gets it down to Miller. Miller's going to pull up for two. That one's good. Keaton Miller, that stroke is looking good tonight. Yeah, he's the leading scorer for Allen. He's first team Northwest Conference selection. He averages 17 a game. So now Bluffton trying to get an answer. Now is there down five. Rooster kicks it back out. Sober, he's going to drive. Loses it off his foot, gets it back up. Long three-pointer. Going to be a foul, and you're going to see a four-point play as Merrick Donaldson took a deep three, gets it to go down. And then he is going to be fouled by Jacob Hershberger. Yeah, definitely behind the arc, as we see on the replay. Lines it up, nothing but the bottom of the net for Merrick Donaldson. He's going to go to the free throw line, where he is the second leading free throw shooter for the Pirates at 80%. Free Drills throw it. is up and good, so he converts on the four-point play. As Merrick now has all seven points for Bluffton. And I'll tell you what, that web, instant, uh, web insurance instant replay did not do that shot justice. You couldn't quite see how deep he was when he let that one go. Hershberger, he's going to drive, throws this one up. That's no good, but we're going to get another whistle. This one is going to go on number three. Going to be Wade Ginther's going to pick up that foul. It's his first, team second. Jacob Hershberger is going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Hershberger with the penetration, draws the contact, gets to the free throw line, shoots a little quickly there, needs to slow his pace down a little bit. Let's see if he does so on this one. We see the replay on the web insurance replay. Draws that contact, goes to the line, does make the second one, one for two. 9-7, Allen East. Ginther brings it up for the Pirates. Hershberger out to guard. Bluffton's going to let that offense go. Ginther tries to drive. Hershberger does a nice job cutting him off, so they're going to pull it back out and reset. Here's 
Donaldson, he's going to have to get rid of it. The drive by Soper, extra kick to the corner, and it is blocked. Jacob Hirschberger comes out of nowhere to send that one down a couple of rows. Yeah, out of nowhere. Excellent recovery to the shooter off the penetration. Bluffton maintains possession, but again, another real nice replay. There's the block. Clean as clean as can be. Nicely done. So Bluffton one more time trying to get things going. Nice drive on the baseline. Wooster gets that one off the glass. No good. Rebound comes down to Klum. Caleb Hopkins rotated over. Nicely done. Defensive rotation affects that shot. Hershberger's going to let the three-point shot go. That one's going to be no good. Soper comes up with the rebound, going to push the pace. Decides to kick it back out. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Going to have another foul. And I believe this might be number two on Keaton Miller. Nice offensive rebound there by Merrick Donaldson. Foul Keeps. actually is going to be whistled for Carson Klum, so that's his first third for the Mustangs. With 3.43 left to go here in the opening quarter. Soper looking for somewhere to go with it. Gets it back on the inbounds. Has a size advantage on Klum, but Klum does a great job of high-pointing that block and they get the ball back. You're right, he did have the, the size advantage, but Carson Klum gets a piece of it. Allen East basketball. Lehman calls for the ball, gets it back, gonna work off the screen. Soper with the good man-to-man -man defense. Klum gonna drive baseline, try to drop it off to Hershberger. Could not connect, but it almost went out of bounds. After all that, ends up in the hands of Miller, but that three-pointer no good. Miller wide open. That's what Allen East fans want to see right there, but unable to connect. Bluffton transitions down into the half-court offense. Donaldson through four. Mustangs gets into the hands of Taron Bobler to check into the game for the Pirates. Another drive, slip pass, no good. As J.P. Yoder couldn't get that one. Allen East comes down quickly on the offensive end. Hopkins hangs high in the air, can't get that one to go down. Fast-paced action, but both offenses right now just a little bit out of sync. Boblet decides to cut it back in, kicks it out. Soper for three, no good. Both teams doing a nice job checking out here for the most part. Bluffton has a couple offensive rebounds. Allen East really hasn't been able to hit the offensive glass at all due to Bluffton's checkouts. Carson Klum pulls it back out, going to slow things down just a little bit here as both offenses have had some good looks. Well, like you said, just a little bit off here in the early going. Miller going to try to back it down. Gets it up, had it knocked away, but he is going to get called for the jump ball as the possession arrow is going to favor the Pirates. Tried to go with an up and under move right there. Did Keaton Miller, but unfortunately unable to step through due to the defense, the wall up by the Pirates. And it had looked like it had gotten knocked out of his hand. It looked like he had possession of it, so he avoided the travel call. But from the official's angle, he saw that that uh, tie up there. So Bluffton gets a fortunate call. Boblet lets a three-pointer go. That one's no good, but Merrick able to run down the offensive rebound as the Pirates have done an excellent job giving themselves a second and third opportunity. But immediately the whistle on Merrick Donaldson, and he picks up his second foul just here in the first quarter. Yeah, Jacob Hirschberger does a nice job of setting him up and taking the offensive charge. So Donaldson is going to take a seat. Don't want to risk him picking up that third foul here already as you check out the Web Insurance instant replay. Shot from underneath. Don't know if he threw that arm out a little bit, but at any rate, offensive charge. Hershberger takes it in. He's short on the layup, but the rebound ends up in the hands of Lehman. He gets it off the glass. No good. Going to be another whistle. And we'll see Keaton Lehman make a trip to the free throw line. Keaton Lehman is a 66% free throw shooter for the Mustangs, second on the squad. They receive the replay, attacking the basket. Good things happen. When you head to the rim, finds himself at the free throw line. Lehman lines up his first shot on the way and good. Those are the first points of the night for Keaton Lehman. Allen East has had four different players score here in the opening quarter. Bluffton, just one. Merrick Donaldson, he has all seven of the Pirates points and he is currently on the bench. Lehman's second shot is good. 
So Bluffton's had some quality looks, Nate, with other players. <laughs> Obviously, uh, with the leading scorer on the bench, they're going to have to find someone else to step up here on this possession. 11-7, Mustangs on top, good feed on the inside. Yoder kicks it out, Boblet for three, that one's no good. Ginther comes up with the rebound, Bluffton's going to get another opportunity. That's at least four offensive rebounds in this first quarter. Minute left to go here in the opening quarter. Soper decides to put it on the floor, can't get a shot off, drops it back off to Bobler. Here's Ginther now around the free throw line, kicks it out. Talanese is playing excellent defense. See Wooster almost lose it out of bounds, but able to gather it back in. 40 seconds left to go. Great point, Nate. They're really limiting the penetration by Bluffton. There's a little penetration with the kick, the dribble drive kick. That's what they were looking for, but Woos are not able to connect. Rebound comes down to Allen East, and we'll see now if they want to hold for the last shot. Carson Klum holds it high up around midcourt, guarded tightly by Soper. Official began the count, so Klum has to move to break it. Going to spin, kick it back out. Ten seconds left to go. Lehman. Working against Wooster, into the lane, throws it up. That one's no good. Fight for the loose ball, ends up in the hands of Lehman. He gets it off the glass and gets it in before the buzzer as the Mustangs right now have all the momentum as we head to the second quarter. After one, the Allen East Mustangs on top, 13 to seven. We'll step aside and be back on WOSC. Welcome back to the Atlanta Field House. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Also like to thank tonight's premier sponsor, that's Spallinger Millwright Services. Spallinger Millwright Services is proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located on Hanthorn Road and online at Spallinger.com. Second quarter underway here at the Elida Fieldhouse in this sectional semifinal. Allen East right now, all momentum. Everything seems to be going right for them. They're having a lot of success at the rim, and they try it again right here. They attack the basket there, number 22 for the Mustangs. Deacon Jones in the game. Comes up short, Bluffton basketball. See, Kerry Wright has come in for Bluffton. And the basketball is number 22, Branson Hilty, also in for the Pirates. He can't connect. Keaton Miller comes up with the rebound. Got to go in there strong. A little bit of contact, but again, you got to go strong. It's tournament time. Officials a little more hesitant to call the, the little bump. You got to earn the foul. Miller turnaround right hand, no good. Rebound comes down to the Pirates as they're still looking for somebody on this team to score, not named Merrick Donald Donaldson. Now here's Ginther. Ginther tries to drive, kicks it back out. See Hilty looking for the back door. Ginther runs the baseline great, but leaves it just short on the rim. Did everything right, but finished. Nice back door cut by Ginther. Nice pass. Allen East with the rebound. So now it's Hershberger's turn. He's going to move it along the perimeter. Ends up back in the hands of Jones. Allen East just running through the offense, trying to see what's going to come free, not trying to force anything. Being a nice job of being patient. Deacon Jones ends up wide open at the top of the three-pointer. He gets that one to go. Yeah, Deacon Jones is the leading three-point shooter for the Mustangs at 35%. We see why right there. Hits that one very effectively from the top of the key. Landon Wooster with a nice answer. He comes down quickly, gets two points back for the Pirates. Those were some much-needed points. It has been a while since they had put some up on the scoreboard. Yeah, they needed that bucket in the first quarter. They were two for 11 from the field, one for one from the foul line. They did out-rebound the Mustangs 9-6, to six, but Bluffton had three turnovers to Allen East, one. Allen East shot four for 11 from the first quarter and three for four from the free throw line, and that's why they had that 13-7 to seven lead at the end of the first quarter. Landon Wooster comes up with the foul. That'll be his first. It's going to be the team's fifth. A couple more substitutions coming into the game as we see number two, Ethan Young, come in for Allen East. 
Carson Klum works up top. Merrick Donaldson back in the game. Has to be careful, Klum, with the nice idea to go right at Donaldson, but can't connect. Soper going against Miller, kicks it back out. Here's Donaldson, gathers it in, goes with the right hand, wide open lane, finishes, and he's going to have the and one opportunity. Nice job there by the Bluffton Pirates, number zero, Merrick Donaldson. He, he continues to be effective offensively. We see it on the Web Insurance replay. Catches Allen East out of position with their help side defense, attacks the rim, has the opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. Donaldson does do that as he connects on his free throw. Able to cut this to a 16-12 game. 16-12, Merrick Donaldson with 10. Young with the three-pointer. Ethan Young coming into the game and making a statement here right away. So Allen East has six points off the bench via the three-pointer, Young and Jones. You always like that if you're the coach, getting those points off the bench. Wooster thought about the three-pointer, decided to take it inside. He's going to get fouled for his trouble. So Bluffton, they continue to attack the boards right there, get another rebound and draw a foul under out of bounds and see what Coach Bob runs as a set. They get the ball back into the hands of Donaldson and kicks it down into the corner. Lob on the inside. Here's Soper. Looked like there's a little bit of grab there by Jones. And the officials missed. He has to get rid of it. Three pointers up. Wooster can't connect. Here comes Allen East. Deacon Jones was trying to get it to Lehman, and what a heads up play. That time by Keaton Lehman, that ball was headed out of bounds, going back to the Pirates. He quickly grabs it and knocks it off of a Bluffton player to make sure they maintain possession. And hustle plays, they just are that much more personified in tournament action. Allen East maintains possession, almost makes them pay, but Bluffton gets the rebound. Here they come. Brady Shea did a nice job that time of clearing some space, but Hershberger not able to connect. Hand off to Ginther. He's up top, decides not to take the shot. He's going to pull it out and let the offense get set. Tries to go with the left hand, works against Hershberger. Donaldson all the way around the perimeter, kicks it back. Now here's Soper's turn into the lane, long pass. Ginther going to run the baseline, comes back up off the glass and gets it to go. We see that dribble drive offense. Carson Soper getting into the paint, kicking it to the teammate who attacks. Carson Soper, the career assist record holder for Bluffton, and we've seen it here. The guys haven't made the shot when he's kicked it to them, but he's been able to get into the paint and find the open man. Another three-point try. That one's no good. Shea with the rebound, and we're going to have a foul. This one is going to go on number 32, J.P. Yoder. That's going to be his first. J.P. Yoder, he was questionable coming into tonight's game. Nate sprained his ankle a couple days ago in practice, but he's Recovered from that. 3.53 left to go here in the half. Bluffton just picked up their 16 foul. As Shea, pull up jumper, that one's going to be no good. Ginther comes up with the rebound, going to push it up for the Pirates. He's going to get into the lane, keeps it all of himself. Can't get it to go down, but he'll make a trip to the free throw line. Nice attack there by Wade Ginther. As you said, going to go to the free throw line, Nate, but we see it here on the Web Insurance replay. He attacks the rim, gets Allen East out of position. Brady Shea was looking to take a charge, but nicely done by Ginther to draw the foul. So we got a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So Alan East wants to take the timeout and talk about it as Ginther's going to make a trip to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Ginther, 72% free throw shooter for the Pirates. Wade able to connect on the first. It's a four-point game, Nate, but in some ways I feel like it seems like it's 
a bigger lead for Allen East than that, and now it's down to three. So Bluffton has just really hung around, getting that experience for those guys, the, the juniors and sophomores who don't have a whole lot of tournament experience. And uh, Allen East looking to attack here. Jones not able to connect. You know, as you mentioned, it has been uh, – it had been, it seemed like it was mostly Allen East. At one point, they had a nine-point lead. They were up 16-7. to seven. The only person scoring for Bluffton had gone to the bench, as that was Merrick Donaldson. But then the defense of the Pirates did a nice job. They started scoring. Donaldson comes back in. He scores. They got this back to a one-possession game. But Hershberger does a great job that time on the spin move along the baseline, gets that layup for two. Yeah, really nice spin to the 10. Attack the rim, does Hershberger. Gets the, gets the field goal. He has three points in the game at this point in time. Here's Wooster. He goes baseline, gets cut off, trying to get a little bit of space, has to kick it out. Boblet, as he comes back into the game, got to the free throw line, has to get rid of it as Alan East has done a nice job of collapsing in the lane every time Bluffton has gotten in there. And now we're going to have an offensive foul as this one is going to go on number two. Carson Soper, you see him trying to plead his case to the officials, but the officials say no. Young man, you lowered that shoulder, initiated the contact. Defender was set, offensive foul. Yeah, nice defensive play by Deacon Jones. Draws that contact, but, Car or uh, excuse me, um, yeah, Carson Soper, he is so good at being fundamental there. I think that's what he's upset about as much as anything. I know what I'm doing in there. He really didn't take the charge on me, but he lost that court case. Now here's Jones on the other end. He's going to drive with the right hand off the glass and in. Deacon Jones, two points. He has really, really been a spark for Allen. He's off the bench, picks up his second field goal, a three and a two now for a total of five. Bobble able to grab that one it has been, as it had been knocked away by the Mustangs. 2.20 left to go here in the half. Donaldson right around the volleyball line. Gets around, has to drop it off. Wade Ginther now looking for someone to go with it. It's going to be Merrick Donaldson. Bluffton just works a little bit of weave up top. Soper, pass down into the corner. Boblitz three-pointer, no good. As Wooster comes up with the rebound, nice slip pass underneath. Soper waits for the defense to fly by, goes up and gets fouled. Another offensive rebound on that possession for the Pirates. Going to pay dividends with Carson Soper going to go to the free throw line. Again, we see it on the replay. There's the shot. And the rebound by none other than number five for the Pirates. So number two, yeah, Ethan Landon Young. Booster. Ethan Young with the foul. It's his first, team seventh, as both teams are in the bonus. The Coach Boblet team is always fundamentally sound, and as Bluffton's running their offense, they always have the ball in low ball position, the feet underneath them. They're not out of control. They do a nice job, and, and uh, again, just good fundamental basketball. And Alan East is playing good defense and making Bluffton work for everything. So Carson Soper goes one for two from the free throw line. This is back to a six-point game with a minute 35 left to go in the half. Hershberger works underneath, gets the shot up. That one's no good. Ends up back in the hands, though, of Hopkins as Caleb Hopkins gets his fifth point of the night. The 6-2 senior forward, nice with the left hand. Offensive rebound and puts it back in. Shot is up, no good. Fight for the rebound. Trey Hensley can't wrap that one up. Bluffton, another offensive rebound. Three-point try, no good. Hershberger, nice athletic play to save that one. Fight for the loose ball on the floor. And we are going to have a jump ball call. Possession arrow is going to favor the Pirates. Nice piece of officiating. All three officials came in hard as the bodies were colliding a little bit. A 50-50 ball, and it ends up a 50-50 ball because it's a held ball tie-up. It's going to stay, as you said, with Bluffton. Bluffton needs to get a little momentum going here with a minute six. They don't want to be down double figures. They're down seven right now. As we go into the half. Final minute here of the first half. Donaldson drops it down into the lane. That's why it's an English teacher. Make that an eight-point lead for Alanis right now. <laughs> J.P. Yoder fights it up through some traffic and gets it in for two. 
J.P. Yoder, one of the most improved players on this Bluffton squad, finishes inside, like you said, in traffic. Nice post move off the window. Soper almost able to get his hands on that one. Gives Lehman a window. He's going to kick it back out. 35 seconds left to go. We'll see if Alan East wants to hold for the final shot. Coach Young is directing his charges to be patient on offense. They're in their pattern offense now. You don't see many pattern offense here. This is what we call the old Cougar offense back in the days when I was coaching. Nice job that time by Wooster. Get his hands on that basketball. Gets that one out of bounds. 11.8 seconds left to go in the half. Going to have a substitution as Luke Ginther is going to come into the game. As you can see, Merrick Donaldson sit down. No chance they want to risk him picking up a third foul here at the end of the second. As you see the officials working some things out, making sure spacing is good. Yeah, ben Kramer doing some proactive officiating there. Caleb Hopkins going to trigger the inbounds. Gets it to Deacon Jones. Ten seconds left to go. Jones with the right hand. Gets it over to Hershberger. Five Jones, seconds. Yeah. Jones looking to drive. Step back three. That one's going to get rejected. Ginther gets his hands on it. Final desperation shot by Lehman is no good. And the first half is going to come to a close. After two, Allen East on top, 25-19. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Stein's Grocery. Stop into Stein's on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full-service meat in Delhi. Having a large event, Stein's also caters. Give us a call. I'd also like to thank tonight's instant replay as it's sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's sectional semifinal action. Between the Allen East Mustangs and the Bluffton Pirates, I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, I know you were looking at those halftime stats. A couple of things really stuck out for you. Absolutely. For Bluffton, they have 10 offensive rebounds. We knew they were hitting the offensive glass. That's great. But shooting-wise, it's been a struggle for the Pirates. 8 for 37 for 22%. Allen East, they've been balanced offensively. They have contained the dribble drive, and they have limited their mistakes. No snowball effect. And Allen East... Gets things started off here in the third quarter. Keaton Lehman comes out quickly with two points. Allen East on top, 27-19. Keaton Lehman, one of the most improved players on this Allen East squad, scores right there to get things started on the right foot for the Mustangs. Soper long pass out to Ginther. That one's going to rattle in and out. Comes down to the Mustangs. Klum, long pass up into the front court. Lehman works against Wooster, gets rid of it. We are just underway here in the third quarter. Lehman almost had that one taken away. Somehow ended up back in his hands. Miller, nice head fake, gets it underneath, and Hopkins finishes for two. Yeah, give Miller the assist. He's able to penetrate, and he finds his teammate, Caleb Hopkins, the lanky left-hander who scores there at the bucket. Double-digit lead for the Mustangs for the first time tonight. Three-point try, no good. Allen East with the rebound. Again, this game sort of playing out the way the first edition did with Allen East getting up by 12 in the third quarter. Right now they have the 10-point lead and draw the foul. Jacob Hirschberger is going to go to the free throw line. We see it here on the Web Insurance Agency replay. Nice attack. And before he shoots those free throws, Bluffton's going to call timeout. We're going to have a full timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 29-19, Allen East has come out here in the third quarter, made their first two baskets to extend their lead as Jacob Hershberger is going to make a trip to the free throw line. 
So Bluffton wants to take the timeout, regroup here. They don't want this one to get too far away from them. You're correct, Nate. They call that timeout. Four points scored right away here by Allen East. Coach Boblet says we got to stop the bleeding. We got to have a little conversation, guys, about our quality of offense and then stepping up on defense. But Hirschberger has a chance to extend the lead. This is that first one. Hirschberger now one for two from the free throw line tonight. Excuse me, one for now two for four. So big possession here for the Pirates coming out of the timeout, down 11. Soper with the basketball, going to run the ball to the left. Here we go. Soper looks to the inside, kicks it back out. Donaldson. We've seen him shoot from that range before as he pulls it back out, gets cut, cut off by Miller. Back it down into the corner. Wade Ginther with the basketball. Feed to the inside. Yoder goes to work, kicks it out to Sopert. Sopert, not sure if somebody got a hand on that basketball or if he just threw it away. But Bluffton fortunate to keep that one. But now Hopkins jumps in front of it, going to take it all the way. And a great job that time by Landon Wooster to poke that one away from behind by, and also not picking up the foul. Takes away the live ball turnover opportunity for the easy hoop. Allen East will have the ball under out of bounds. They execute here, get a bucket. Bluffton's going to find themselves in danger zone a little bit. Kenny Logan style. Let's see what the Mustangs do with the basketball. Klum comes out, gets the basketball, going to pull it back out, let the offense get set up. Miller comes free. Three-pointer on its way and good. Keaton Miller with his second three-pointer of the night. Got his feet set, did nothing but hit the bottom of the net with that three-pointer. Extends that lead now to 14 for the Mustangs. Three-point try on the other end is good. Carson Soper comes up with an answer. He shoots 32% behind the arc. None bigger than that one right there to get it back to 11 to stop the bleeding a little bit. The first bucket of the third quarter for the Pirates. Now Klum back up top, looking towards the bench for directions. The offense is going to get going. Again, Allen East, they do like to play up tempo, but they've done an outstanding job of playing in the half court, but they have a turnover right there. Yoder did a nice job poking that one away from Miller. Donaldson gets it down to Ginther as he's going to move back up towards the top. Now here's Yoder, going to go to work in the lane. Left hand turn around, no good. Miller does a nice job of walling him off. Going to shoot it himself. This time can't connect, but a great job by Caleb Hopkins to follow the shot. Gets an easy put back, and it is a 35-22 lead for the Mustangs. Caleb Hopkins has had an outstanding game. Just spurtability, he's just been around the ball a lot, attacking the rim with the dribble, but also hitting the boards as he does right there and scores on the offensive glass. Boblet just a little bit short on that three-pointer. Klum's going to run the floor. Hershberger, he gets to the middle of the lane, puts that one up. No good. Going to have a whistle. And uh, this one is going to go on. Looks like it's going to be Hershberger. Going to have a push from behind. Tough Back. call on Jacob Hershberger right there. Uh, he was going up for the rebound. I know it was over the back, or the contact over the back, but the defensive player really sort of went back into him. We had a better view, again, and it's a lot of it's about angles for officials. Uh, but that one, that was a tough call. You see it on the replay. There's the shot. And then he's going to go up for the rebound, and you can see the defensive player sort of take away his chance to land. But so it goes, we move on. Substitution for the Pirates, number 21, carry right back into the game as Boblet lets the two-point shot go. 35-24, Bluffton trying to think, see if they can't get this one back to single digits. Allen East again running their, their pattern offense here. They're going to get an illegal screen by Hirschberger. So Hershberger now picks back-to-back -back fouls up on consecutive trips to the offensive end of the floor. He now has three on the game. It's the second team foul. So he is going to check out. As you'll see, number two, Ethan Young, come back into the game. There's been such an emphasis on the screening and making sure that screens are set. It's really 
<laughs> the screen itself, it's almost becoming an endangered species in the game because of the turnovers that occur. We have it right there. Hilty can't connect. As you see, Wright was trying to get it down into the corner to Donaldson, but that one goes off of Merrick's hands out of bounds, and we'll go back to Allen East. So a costly turnover there for Bluffton. They don't get a look at the basket. Allen East, again, with the 11-point lead, teetering, a, getting a lead that is almost insurmountable. But again, when they played just 12 days ago, this is where the game sat at that particular time. It's like a carbon copy. So Kerry Wright's going to pick up the foul. It's his first, team second. He tried to reach in there to poke that one away from Miller. Got too much of the body on the reach in. Get a good look of Klum on this inbounds. Going to take the handoff into the lane. Keeps it all of himself off the glass. A little too hard. Donaldson, though, can't come up with the rebound. It looked like Klum dribbled out of bounds, and he did. So, But they're so actually going to call a push foul on him on that rebound. You're right. He did dribble it out of bounds, but a foul called before the dribble when he was trying to secure the rebound. Carson Klum, he's a, he's a scrappy guy. He's a glue guy for these Mustangs. We see it right there, his great effort, but he called, gets called for the foul. So that is the third foul for Klum as he comes up, finds Lehman up and under for Keaton. Give Klum the assist right there. Again, scrappy glue guy, Carson Klum. He's making his mark here in the latter half of the third quarter on this game. Allen East comes up with another defensive rebound. Lehman for three-point try. That one rattles in and out. You saw the Allen East faithful start to rise. They were ready to take the roof off of this place if it went down. And obviously, they want that sweet revenge from losing the game against the Pirates earlier in the season 12 days ago. But they also know they got to keep pouring it on. That's the lesson they learned from that regular season contest. Maybe another takeaway by the Mustangs. They're on top, 37-24, 2-11 left to go here in the third. Layman gets it back out to Klum. They're going to try to slow things down again. Layman, he's just going to go baseline as that lane came completely open. And Keaton Lehman gets it to go down for two more. Gets it to go down, and it shows a little enthusiasm as he's down around the floorboards and sees that ball go through and we're going to see Bluffton take another timeout down 15. We'll have a 30 second timeout by the Pirates. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. You know, for both of these squads, the uh, conference selections came out this week. They are well represented. Carson Klum for Allen East, second team NWC. Keaton Lehman, first team. And Keaton Miller, honorable mention for the Mustangs. For Bluffton, second team Merrick Donaldson. Honorable mention, Carson Soper. And here is Donaldson working against Lehman, has to get rid of it. Ginther gets to the free throw line, kicks it back out. Ginther with the sidestep, can't get that one to go down, almost poked that one away, but Deacon Jones who's coming into the game, comes up with it. Get Bluffton just struggling to find offense here. Consistent, clean looks. you got to give the Allen East defense a lot of credit here throughout the entire game, but especially in this third quarter. And we're going to have another illegal screen called against the Mustangs. This one's going to go on Ethan Young. It is his third. It'll be the team's fifth. Or excuse me, team's fourth. So Allen East with three players with uh, three fouls, Jacob Hershberger, Ethan Young, and Carson Klum, all with three fouls currently. As we are under a minute left to go here in the third. Here's Wooster, gets it back over to Soper. His three-point try is up and good. Carson Soper, second three-pointer of the quarter. Excellent medicine for the Pirates with 40 seconds remaining in the third. See if they can get a stop and a score here. Get back in this game. 
Hopkins not able to connect. Offensive rebound down to the Mustangs as Brady Shea gets the putback. And he picks up his first two of the night. Maybe it's just this basket, but it seems they're, like there's just been a plethora of offensive rebounds for both teams. Bluffton in the first half, Allen East here in the second at this end. Wooster, he's going to drive. He's going to get called, or excuse me, he's going to get fouled as Brady Shea's going to get called with that one. It'll be his first, and now it is the team's fifth. So we see the Web Insurance instant replay attacking the basket, drawing the contact is Landon Wooster. He's going to go to the free throw line where he is the leading free throw shooter for the Pirates at 88%. Wooster able to connect on the first. Going to have a substitution come into the game. Luke Ginther will check in as Wade Ginther will check out. Momentum definitely on the side of the Mustangs. It's imperative that Bluffton ups her defensive game on this last possession, try and keep Allen East from scoring with 14 seconds remaining. Here come the Mustangs. So Wooster goes one for two. Deacon Jones quickly up into the front court. Nine seconds left to go. Jones going to drive. Almost loses his dribble. Gets taken away. Gets it back in. Lehman going to let the long three-pointer go. And it's good. Keep Lehman. Yes. A last second deep three-pointer pushes Allen East's lead to 44-28. We'll step aside to be back with the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three-pointers are sponsored by Spallinger Millwright Services. Spallinger Millwright Services is proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality productions from fabrication to installation. Located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spallinger.com. So Keaton Lehman having a big third quarter as he ended with nine points and ends it on this long three-pointer. Yeah, Lehman drills it to give the quarter to the Mustangs 19-9. And at that quarter break, I'm sure Coach Young said, hey, we were ahead against them just 12 days ago going into the fourth quarter by nine points. We've extended that. Let's play like we're down nine points and really, really be aggressive defensively and execute on offense and, and get this sectional win. So Bluffton looking to try to stay in this one. They're going to have to score here early. See, Soper lets the defense gets high. Going to pick up that foul, and that's what Bluffton's going to have to do. They're going to have to find ways to score with the stop, with the clock stopped as Carson Soper goes to the free throw line. Allen East in that third quarter, as we see the replay, was Soper attacking and drawing contact. But in the third quarter, Allen East was 8 for 13. Overall, 6 for 9 from 2 and 2 for 4 from 3. 1 for 2 from the line. They had 10 boards, turned the ball over three times. Bluffton only got nine shots off. They were 3 for 9, 1 for 3 from 2, 2 for 6 from three, one for two from the line, one rebound, and three turnovers as well. Soper able to connect on that free throw as it makes it 44-29, 7.30 left to go in the game. Jones working against Yoder. He's able to poke that one away. So Bluffton has gone to a trapping zone defense here. We'll see on the sideline out of bounds if they stay in that or go back to man-to-man. -man. They are in man-to-man -man here. Now here's Hershberger back in the game. He's going to drive, going to have an offensive foul as Hershberger, as he went to lift up, it looks like, and maybe we'll take a look at it here at the Web Insurance Instant Replay, it looks like he might have been able to connect with that elbow, and that's what got the offensive foul. Yeah, Landon Wooster does a great job of setting him up and taking the charge. Great call by the official Scott Mock. Johnny on the spot, we see the replay right here. Wooster gets in position and draws the charge turnover on the Mustangs. So a hard foul by Hershberger gives him four now as Donaldson's three-pointer. That one looked good leaving the hands, but landed up just short. It's going to go back to the Mustangs. It did look good, but boy, that was a deep three for Donaldson, and he almost connected. But on the ensuing rebound, knocked off of the Bluffton Pirates, and as you said, Allen East going to have possession up 15 with seven minutes to go. So Bluffton can't afford too many empty offensive possessions here. They're looking for a defensive stand right now. 
Bluffton in a 1-2-2 two, two trap. Alanis does a nice job there breaking it, but there's the trap against Jones. Works out of it. Jones tries to split the defense, going to lose it. Hilty gets it over to Ginther. Ginther, Euro step, good. Nicely done, a little contact there. Could have been a foul call, but gets the two-pointer. And Gabe Young's going to call timeout for the Mustangs. Full timeout. So we have another timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Nick Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. Allen East on top, 44-31, but Bluffton looking for a way to get in this, back in this game. What do they got to do, Dave? They got to be aggressive at both ends. We're seeing them go with a trapping defense now, 1-2-2. Two, two. And offensively, they got to look to attack and be aggressive to the basket. You know, if you're Allen Heast, you got to continue to play uh, your offensive game plan, execute your offensive game plan. You can't start looking at that scoreboard because that lead will evaporate in seconds if you do so. So here we go. We see the trap again by the Bluffton Pirates. There's a steal. Donaldson goes up high, takes that one away, goes all the way in, can't get it off the glass, but what a putback by Branson Hilty as he got full extension on that arm and it still managed to get it up for two. Cutting the lead to 11 now. The trap is being effective, but we're going to have a foul called. I believe that's going to be on Wade Ginther, his third, team's third. See, Hopkins takes it out for Allen East, gets it into Klum. Lofton's trying to turn up the pressure, but Klum slices right through, gets to the rim, no good. Punch out, goes to Ginther. Quick possession that comes up empty for the Mustangs. Soper needs somewhere to go with it, going to spin. Can't find a shot, extra pass. Ginther leans in, gets it to go down as Klum picks up the foul. And Bluffton will get the and one. Yeah, chance for the old-fashioned three-point play for none other than Wade Ginther. And we see it on the replay. Nice ball movement by the Pirates. And then Ginther attacks the rim. Klum tries to take the charge, not quite in position. Chance to cut it to eight. And here comes Bluffton, just like the last game. Ginther connects. This is now just an eight-point game not too long ago. This was a 17 or 19-point game. Bluffton has found a way back into this one, and Alan East has a couple of issues as Hershberger is on the bench with four. Carson Klum back on the bench with four fouls. And they're trying to find some way to stave off this comeback by Bluffton. Miller. Down low, gets his own put back, and that goes in for two. Excellent ball movement by the Mustangs right there. Little dribble, or little use of the dribble, and they get themselves the ball on the block, and Miller scores it. We have a foul down at the other end on number five, Trey Hensley for the Mustangs. So Trey Hensley's going to pick up his first. That is the 19th foul for Allen East. That puts Wade Ginther back at the free throw line. I believe this is one and one, and he is a 72% free throw shooter. Connects right there. Again, Bluffton the opportunity to score with the clock stopped. Wade Ginther now three for four from the line on the night. Coach Boblet calls the defense double fist. Will he extend a little bit more or go back to that half court trap? Yeah, they're going to pick up full court now. Long pass up to Miller, left all alone. He has numbers. He's going to take it, gets it all the way in. Nicely done. So much patient, patience right there by Keaton Miller. Steps through the defense, scores at the basket, makes the Pirates pay for extending the defense full court. Long three by Donaldson goes down. We've got action now. Cuts the lead to seven. Does Merrick Donaldson, second leading three-point shooter on the squad at 39, and a steal. Pass up ahead to Donaldson. Nice turnaround. Can't get that one to go. Maybe rushed it just a little bit. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Allen East. 
So Bluffton has a chance to cut the lead down to five or even four with the three, and we're going to have a timeout. This time it's going to be Allen East as they want to talk about it. They've seen their lead dwindle down to seven. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Stites Grocery. Stop into Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full-service meat and deli. Having a large event, Stites also caters. Give us a call. Taking a look at the Stites Grocery scoreboard, we can see Bluffton has clawed their way back into this game. They've made it just a seven-point deficit on the back of a long three-pointer from Donaldson, and they have the basketball. Ball goes out of bounds there, but yeah, Bluffton again keys to the game. They only have one senior out there, but they are playing very, very comfortable now. Jacob Hirschberger back in the game for Allen East. Trying to stem the tide here are the Mustangs. Bluffton looking to cut into that deficit a little bit more. If I was Bluffton, I'd find Hirschberger and I'd go right at him. Sitting in there with four fouls, Sopers three-pointer goes down, and the call. We are going to have a, another opportunity to see a four-point play for Bluffton. Outstanding shot by none other than Carson Soper, the glue guy for the Pirates. We see it on the Web Insurance Agency replay. Deacon Jones comes over, just makes too much contact on the checkout. Soper, a chance to cut the lead to three. We got ourselves a ball game, Nate. You know, and I've seen that a couple of times this year where you had somebody flying out there to defend that three-pointer as Carson Soper connects. And somehow, some way, with 4.30 still left to go in this game, it is only a three-point deficit. The half-court trap has just been so effective for Bluffton, detrimental if you're an Allen East Mustang fan. It's kept the ball above the free throw line, and Allen East has not been able to penetrate against it. But here comes Hirschberger. Hirschberger goes underneath. He's going to be fouled. This one's going to go on Wooster. But to finish the thought on the other side, like I said, I, a couple of times this, this year I've seen that. Where we've seen players, you know, we used to see the, the quick closeouts coming through, you know, wanting to go wildly swinging at it. But that we don't see that as much anymore. You see those closeouts where they go for the long box out from behind the three-point line. But it's almost at a detriment anymore as Hirschberger can't uh, connect on that first free throw because that's what's happening. They're go connecting on that. And – if they make that contact before they get down and they hit the floor, it's exactly what we see happen. You nailed it, Nate. You got to let the shooter come back to the floor, and that's what did not occur. And Soper was able to connect on the four-point play. Hirschberger one for two on the line for Allen East. We're back to a four-point lead. Four minutes to go. 49-45, Bluffton with the basketball. We'll see if they can continue this comeback as Miller comes around, tries to tie it up. Luckily, he didn't get called for the foul. Ginther goes through. Nice rejection by Miller. Goes back out to Soper. Soper kicks it out to Donaldson. He lets a three-pointer go. That one's no good. Hershberger goes up high to get that rebound. And we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Taron Bobley. No place for the weak of heart out there now, especially on the glass. But we saw, as you said, maybe a foul could have been called at the elbow, but that was scouting for Allen East. That's one of Bluffton's set plays, get the ball to the elbow, and Allen East immediately doubled the ball at the elbow. Uh, and as a result, it, it messed up the set for Bluffton. Allen East with the basketball. So Allen East able to get out of the pressure, but immediately loses it as Deacon Jones Having a little bit of an issue here towards the end of the fourth quarter. He's in right now because of the four fouls from Klum. As Klum is up. Not sure if they're going to try to get him back into the game now or wait. Deacon Jones has hit some big shots. He's played well for the Mustangs tonight. But right now in the fourth, a couple of mental ones. You're right. It's been tough out there here at the end. A little tough sledding for Jones. But he's a freshman. He's learning from it. Here come the Pirates with the miss, though. Ginther had a wide open look at that layup. Left it short. Jones pushes up ahead. Miller, he's going to lose his own footing that time. And we're going to have a timeout. Allen East, they saw Keaton Miller go down. They did not want to lose that possession. So Coach Young calls the timeout. They don't lose the possession, but that's their fourth timeout of the game, Nate. They've got one timeout left here with approximately three minutes to go. Full timeout. We'll step aside as well. Allen East on top, 49-45. We'll be back on WOSA.
Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and the Lofton. It is coming down to it here at the Atlanta Fieldhouse in this sectional semifinal. When it looked like Allen East may run away and hide, Bluffton has found a way back into this game. 3.21 left to go, and the Pirates just down four. It's what we expected from these two evenly matched teams. Nice move by Miller. What a great inside look, but he can't get it. And Hilty, that time, instead of grabbing it, poked it out. As Allen East had another opportunity, but Bluffton comes up with it. The turnover gives the ball back to the Pirates. You're right, a missed layup, a rebound that was given away, but the turnover occurs, outside shot. Wooster all alone for three, and he connects. One point game. Give Ginther the assist, but you're right, one point game, 2.53 to go. The Pirates go back to man-to-man, -to -man, but they're gonna run and jump the ball handler. Gonna have a block called. Yeah, and this is why I love tournament time. <laughs> Anything can happen. Oh, this gym was pretty melancholy there for a while as this one looked like it may be over early, but Bluffton not ready to go home yet. They have come back into this one and 2.48 left to go, just a one point deficit. Wade Ginther picks up his fourth personal foul. He's gonna go to the bench. That's the last free foul, if you will, for Bluffton. Alan Neese will be in the one and the bonus on the next one. Hensley thought about it, thought about it, decides to shoot it. That one's no good. Donaldson comes up with the rebound. Pass goes to Boblet. Boblet struggled offensively. He gets rid of it. Soper trying to get it in. Bluffton trying to take the lead. Can't do it. I like Carson Soper taking that shot. He's your senior. He's your leader. Doesn't come up with the bucket there, but he had a good look. Jones gets it over to Lehman. Lehman had a huge three, uh, third quarter, excuse me. And now here's Miller. Miller got caught off along the baseline. They're going to go back to him, though. Boblet comes over for help, and we're going to have a foul. So that's going to send Keaton Miller to the free throw line, the leading free throw shooter for the Mustangs at 72%. He's going to shoot one in the bonus here. Well, I take that back. That's the 10th foul on Bluffton, so he's going he's to gonna shoot. One one. No, that's correct. That's correct. One and one for Keaton Miller. 72% free throw shooter. Let's see what he does. These are big ones, Nate. Six foot four senior lines up his first shot. That one rattles around and goes down. A lot of confidence there on the free throw line. No hesitation. 50 to 48 now. Two minutes left to go in the game. Miller's second free throw good, back out to a three-point deficit. The first of two sectional semifinals here at the Fieldhouse. Coldwater LCC awaits after this one. But first, some business to take care of is Bluffton down one possession. Ginther going to drive. Goes up, can't get it to go down, but he's going to go to the free throw line. That's a nice job. Does Wade Ginther in drawing contact, able to go to his strong hand. We see it here on the Web Insurance Agency instant replay. Draws a slew of Mustangs. Deacon Jones picks up the personal. Deacon Jones with his first foul as Ginther can't connect on the free throw. 51-49, two-point game. Jones works against Donaldson, and we're going to have a foul. Donaldson, he just picked up his third. So Deacon Jones is going to go to the free throw line. He's actually the leading scorer, as our leading free throw shooter for the Mustangs at 84%. He just hasn't had enough attempts to qualify. But let's see what he does here, the freshman, see if he steps up to the line with confidence. Jones hits a big free throw for his team here late in the fourth quarter. You mentioned he's a freshman, made a couple of mental mistakes here in the fourth quarter, but hasn't let it hasn't let it rattle him as he lines up his second shot. It is up, and it is good. Both of them tickle the rim a little bit, rim backboard and through the net. Nicely done by Deacon Jones. Big part of that is it's now a two-possession game. Minute under a minute 30 left to go. Wooster pulls it back out, almost traveled, 
The officials say it was good as Bluffton now wants to take the full timeout. Great timeout by Coach Boblett and his Bluffton Pirate coaching staff. We're going to take the timeout one more time and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Spalling and Real Right Services. Spalling and Real Right Services is proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spallinger.com. said that was a great timeout, Nate. Why? Well, first of all, you're down four. You need an outstanding possession. But before the timeout, Bluffton was just a little bit discombobulated. They just got out of sync. So I really like the timeout by the Pirates. Let's see if they look to score out of the uh, sideline out of bounds and what they run. Here comes the handoff. Looking for Donaldson. Donaldson's working against Lehman. Works around, gets it back into the hands of Ginther. He's been big here in the second half. Good find down low. Wooster with the hesitation. Let's Miller fly by. And now another timeout by Bluffton as it's back to a two-point game. So Coach Boblet calls the timeout. They run an outstanding set here and get the back door cut and the bucket. And then he calls timeout right again, right away again, down two, so he can set his defense. Yeah, Bluffton, at a lot of times we mentioned it. I mean, they almost looked dead in the water. Did not look like they were going to be able to come back into this game, especially going into the fourth quarter. But they somehow, they were down 44-28 at the beginning of this quarter. But they found a way. They finally found that spark. The offense got going. They carried that momentum. And now here they are with under a minute left to go as Allen East clings to just the two-point lead. That half-court trap has just been very, very effective for Bluffton. Take nothing away from Allen East trying to break it. It's just been the aggressiveness and the length uh, at the guard position out there at the top uh, that's been effective for Bluffton. They're going to extend it to full court again. Last time they did this, they gave up a layup. We're going to have a foul called now. So Coach Bobla not happy with that call, wanting to know why there was such a quick whistle. The officials over explaining it to him as Layman's going to go to the free throw line. Just the 19th foul, so it's still a one and one situation as Keaton Layman is going to have to connect on this first one. Yeah, the first team Northwest Conference selection, second leading free throw shooter on this Mustang squad at 66%. None bigger than these right now at this point in the ball game. Layman with 13 points on the night. Can't connect on that one. Loose ball ends up back in the hands of Lehman. He gets it up. No good. Boblet comes up with the rebound. 55 seconds left to go. Ginther pulls it back out, lets the offense get set. Bluffton going to look for a quality look. Ginther drives, gets cut off, tries to reverse it. Goes back with the right hand. Has it swiped away, gets it back. Soper, 38 seconds left to go. And here's Donaldson, the leading scorer for this team. He kicks it back out. Soper, he's going to drive. Nice find of Wooster down low. We are tied at 53. He said earlier, Carson Soper, the career assist record for the Pirates. Great assist right there and a steal. Soper comes up with it. We're going to have a loose ball foul. This one's going to go on Allen East, it looks like. We'll let him get cleared, let him get the bodies untangled. But I believe the official was pointing at Allen East. Lehman picks up the foul. And Bluffton's going to go to the free throw line with 16.8 seconds left to go. And if you can't believe this, they're going to have an opportunity to take the lead. A chance to go ahead right there on the steal. Carson Soper he just has the assist to his teammate to tie the game and then gets the steal and gets fouled. Soper, he's a 54% free throw shooter, Nate. None bigger in his whole career than these right here. We see the replay. There he's got control, and then he takes contact, almost on the verge of being intentional, but the kids were just hustling. Nothing dirty there at all. Soper, here we go. Big, big free throws for the Pirates. Soper's first free throw is up and good. Bluffton takes their first lead since early in the first quarter. Ice in the veins on that one. Let's see what Soper does here. Bluffton now with four players in double digits. Second free throw. That one's good, two-point game. Allen East going to go quickly. Jones brings it up into the front court. 
as Coach Young is going to take the timeout with 13.2 seconds left to go and his team down two. That's his last timeout of the game. Down two, as you said, 13 seconds. I think what we're going to see, Nate, sideline out of bounds, see if they can run something off of that. One of their pet plays, sideline out of bounds. If not, then I think you're going to look at penetration and either get to the rim or kick for an open look. You know, Dave, you've been on the sidelines. You've been on the bench. You've been in those huddles. How do you get your team in the right headspace after watching that huge lead disappear and know you're on the verge here of giving this one away to a team that you just gave it away to less than two weeks ago? you got to lock into the moment. You can't think about the big lead that we surrendered. It's all about just locking into the moment, executing this play that we have practiced and uh, executed in games past during the regular season and let's perform to the best of our ability. I always used to say too, guys, execute the play, get a good look. We can't lose this game on this shot. We can only win it, you know, or in this case, tie it. So I want my kids to be relaxed in this situation and just play the game, execute what we've done all year long. Jacob Hershberger, he's going to take it out of bounds for the Mustangs. Gets it into Jones. Jones. Right on the verge of a backcourt violation. Fortunate on that one. They get it to Miller on the change down low. That one's no good. Ginther with the rebound. He's going to get called for the travel. A lot of contact in there. But yeah. we got the travel play, and that's, that's what results. Obviously, if you're Alan East, you're thankful. Bluffton's like, oh, there was a foul there. He, or he was dribbling the ball. But here we go. No Bluffton's got to regroup quickly. 3.2 seconds left to go. Miller wide open in the middle. He gets it to go down. Long splash attempt. No good. And in the first sectional semifinal of the night, we go to overtime. Keaton Miller had a look in the possession prior to the under out of bounds. Didn't come away with the bucket. Gets a chance to redeem himself and does exactly that. Kisses it off the window. Double nickels up there on the board for both teams. We're going, as you said, Nate, overtime, free basketball. We'll have a four-minute overtime when we return. We'll be back on WOSN. Not just bonus basketball, it's bonus tournament basketball as Allen East will control this opening tip. They had a huge lead in a regulation. Bluffed and fought and clawed their way back into it. Had the lead with three seconds left to go, but a broken play left Keaton Miller all alone in the lane. He's able to tie it up, and here we are tied at 55. Allen East looking to go inside here on the possession, draws the foul. Definitely what Coach Young wanted in that possession. We got to get it on the block, and Keaton Miller does get it down there and draws the contact. He's going to shoot two. So Landon Wooster is going to get called for that foul. That was his second as Keaton Miller steps to the free throw line. Double bonus for both teams as he can't connect on the first. Hit that big, big shot at the end of regulation. Did a lot of things that he's not typically going to do at the free throw line. Let that one go. Stepped away right away. Let's see if he relaxes and slows things down here on the second. Does so and gets it. Makes the adjustment to give the Mustangs a one-point lead. Soper brings it up. Wooster going to go baseline. Gets cut off. Has to get it back. Long pass over to Boblet. Now, Ginther. Ginther with the four fouls. Gets the basketball. Going to let the offense get ready. Going to work off the screen. Almost lost at that time, but able to get it back in. And here's Donaldson. Donaldson's had a quiet second half. As Soper has done a lot of heavy lifting, tries to get another one. That one's no good. Lehman, long pass up ahead. Hopkins lays it in for two. Hopkins does a nice job of catching that ball and then going on the right side with the right hand. The left-hander, natural left-hander, does a nice job executing the fundamentals on that bucket. Three-point game. As Donaldson trying to work through the screen, we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Lehman. As Keaton Lehman, I believe that is going to be his first foul. As much as they've been quite a few fouls, both teams in 
A uh, double bonus, a lot of guys sitting there with three, four fouls. But Lehman has had a clean night until just then. Yeah, busted through that, that foul. Soper set him up, the senior for Bluffton, the lone senior on this roster. And he took that, that uh, illegal contact on his screen. But he misses that first free throw. So Soper not able to connect on the first. Second one is good. Two-point game. Allen East with the basketball as Deacon Jones brings it up. Bluffton staying man-to-man. -man. They didn't go into their half-court trap off of that made free throw. The half-court trap, which has been very effective for them in the comeback. They've gotten some great minutes tonight out of the freshman Deacon Jones as Carson Klum has been on the bench with four fouls. Klum thought about the, or excuse me, Deacon thought about the three-point try that time, but pulls it back out. Going to let some more time burn off the clock. Hershberger tries to drive, has his pocket picked. Wooster with the basketball. He's going to wait and pull it back out. Didn't want to challenge Miller. Boblet left all alone. Three-pointer good. Does a ball fake to the corner and says, hey, if nobody's on me, I'm going to let him fly. Boblet shoots 32% behind the arc. Big one right there for the Pirates. Taryn Boblet had really struggled here in this game. Makes a huge shot, a turnover. And we're going to have a blocking foul as Soper's going to go to the free throw line. And Keaton Lehman can't believe it. Lehman looked like he had pretty good position down there. We're going to take a look on the Web Insurance Agency replay. And it did look like maybe it was a little late trying to slide over there. Senior on senior. Those guys have played against each other since seventh grade. Soper and Lehman. Carson Soper made a decision at the free throw line. I'm attacking. We'll see what happens. Again, aggressive offensively in tournament action. That's what you need to do. He gets the call on this particular play. Going to go to the free throw line. A chance to put Bluffton up by three. Carson Soper lines up his first shot. It is up, and it is good. We've had a lot of balls roll around that real estate up there, just fall through. Pretty shots for, for guys on both squads. Soper connects on both. He didn't need to worry about the rim on that one. Hit the bottom of the courts. 61-58, the Pirates on top. 130 left to go here in the overtime. Hershberger gets it over as it ends up in the hands of Deacon Jones. Lehman had this one go at his feet, gathers it back up, lets it fly and connects. What a shot by Keaton Lehman. Yeah, the senior drills it. You want to say, hey, you didn't catch that cleanly, bobbled it, don't shoot it, you're not in rhythm. He said, ah, no problem, I got this one for my team. Here's Soper going baseline, tries a cross-court pass, and now Soper going to get called for the charge. We got opposite calls here. Scott Mock and Ben Kramer are going to talk. Mock called a block. Kramer called a charge. Got to get together and get on the same page. So the officials do what they should, and that's get together. So we're going to take a look at the replay. And I, it looks like. Let's see who wins. Deacon Jones might have been moving those feet, but it also looked like Soper had to leave it as he was a little out of control. He looked like he was heading out of bounds. Both officials talking about it and at the same time running to play through their minds again to see if the movie real. They know it's a huge yeah, call. You saw yeah. that call. Maybe we just call all, uh, an AP, an alternate possession, <laughs> because right now they cannot get on. It doesn't look like they're going to agree. So this is what they're the officials the should do as they get both coaches together. This is what officiating should be. If you both believe you have the right call, you shouldn't just say, well, okay, I'll agree with you. This is a huge call here for this game. Tied at 61, 106 left to go. Yeah, let's take another look at it here on the Web Insurance Agency replay. And I think you're right, Nate. They're going to call a foul on both players, go alternating possession. The arrow points towards Bluffton. So Bluffton is going to keep it. As you can see, that is a close call. That's a tough one for the officials. But I think in the end, they did what was right as they could not get on the same page with it. So we're going to have a timeout on the floor, and we will step aside one more time. Tied at 61. We'll be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So as you said, Nate, uh, with the foul being charged to both players, we're going to go off the arrow. It's going to be the alternating possession. Uh, Bluffton maintains possession, then as a result, both teams with one timeout remaining with Bluffton using that timeout right there. Big possession here for the Pirates going down the stretch in overtime. You know, we looked at that instant replay several times, and, you know, it was a close call. We each kind of had our opinion on what we thought that call was. You know, but at the end, if you if the officials, if you have officials with differing opinions, that's they did what they should have done. That was great officiating by those two. Yeah, they did it, and they talked about it, and that's all you can ask as a coach, really try and get on the same page. So 61-61, Coach Boblett, the chess master, I say that affectionately, he's going to bring the ball out here. The guy's got to take care of it, but I think he's going to try and run it down and get the last shot here. I See think, if Alan East looks to trap it all. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they are content with letting this run down, trying to take the last shot. But as we say that, they tried to go inside. A bad bounce pass at the feet of Wooster. It goes out of bounds and back to the Mustangs. Carson Soper's able to penetrate. Jump stops, finds his teammate, but they come up empty with the turnover. Let's see if Alan East, Coach Young's going to use his last timeout. See if they look to hold it for the last shot. So we will stay here, and I'll tell you what, you know, we, we've mentioned it. It's tournament time. You know, these are exciting games, but what a way to kick off the tournament action here at the Fieldhouse. A back-and-forth game here late. It was not like that for the majority of this game, but these two teams now are going blow for blow. They do not want to go home. You're right. Allen East has maintained the pace of the game or maintained the pace of the game and the lead for, of the game throughout the majority, but in the fourth quarter, Bluffton went to that half-court trap, and that got them back in the game. But here we are, 61 apiece. I think Allen East, again, sideline out of bounds. Going to look, maybe, maybe run the same thing they did at the end of regulation where they looked to get the ball to Miller down on the block. Uh, and he was able, unable to come up with the bucket, but they maintained possession on the under out of bounds play. And then he scored to push it into overtime. I do think they'll look to hold it. 61-61. I, I, you got to take care of the basketball. Don't turn it over. Run your set at around 12 seconds. So here we go. 33.1 seconds left to go. Allen East with the basketball. And we'll see if they choose to try to hold on to this one to take the last shot. See what kind of defense Bluffton chooses to play. They got to be strong with the basketball. And you know, they're a little shorter. And Bluffton's got a little length. Got a low ball like Hirsch. Hirschberger has it right now. Just be patient. Run your set here in another 10 seconds or so. Jones works through some a contact and uh, working through the screen. Hirschberger up top, gets it over to Lehman. Lehman Alanis. guarded tight by Soper. Alanis has no timeout, so they got to play through it here now. Seven seconds left to go. They're still a little ways away from the basket. Lehman goes to drive, pulls up the free throw line. It hangs on the rim and no good. Comes flying in at Hopkins, but couldn't get it to go. And we are going to double overtime. Keaton Lehman had a great look right there. And again, we talked about how many soft shots we've seen go in the hoop. That was another one that laid up there on the rim, but just fell off. Double overtime, Nate. We're going to step aside. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard sponsor, Stites Grocery. Stop into Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full service meat, and deli. Having a large event, Stites also caters. Give us a call. Double overtime about underway here at the Fieldhouse. And that last shot, I mean, I, you could have heard a pin drop as that basketball hung on the front rim. Yeah, then Hopkins comes in strong, just unable to connect as he tosses the ball back up at the backboard. So just, like the, just like the first overtime, Allen East will control the basketball here to begin the double overtime. Tied at 61. We were tied at 55 at the end of regulation. One overtime, not enough. 
Hershberger trying to go down low. Wooster able to cut that one off, gets it up to Soper. Soper kicks it ahead to Boblin. Right back to Donaldson. Donaldson three-pointer, no good. Ginther gets the rebound. Boblet, he's going to let the three-pointer go. Big shot. Taryn Boblet with his second three-pointer. He had one in the first overtime and another here in the second. He has come up big here late. Pushes the Pirates up three, 64-61. Let's see if Alan East can answer. Jones, he's going to drive, puts it off with the left hand. That one's good. Aggressive drive by the freshman, Deacon Jones. Nicely done. Sofer bringing it up for Bluffton. They have the one-point lead, under three left to go here in the second overtime. Ginther going to work through the screen, kicks it back out. Bob the one more time. He likes the corner. That one's no good. Sofer does a great job getting the rebound. And we'll see, are we going to have a foul or are we going to have a jump ball? And it's going to be a foul as this one is going to go on Deacon Jones. Or excuse me, they call that on Keaton Miller. From our angle, I thought the officials were putting up double twos, but. And I thought it might be a held ball as well, but the foul does go on Miller in this particular instance. Put Soper on the line, and there's a nice soft kiss. That falls through for him to put Bluffton up by two. Another offensive rebound right there for the Pirates. And again, Carson Soper, the lone senior, hits the two for two from the foul line. Soper has now hit five straight free throws here between the first and second overtime, and that is what you expect out of your senior. And he has 19 points to lead the way for the Pirates. Hershberger slips it to Miller. Miller with the spin. We're going to have a blocking foul called on Wooster as Keaton Miller is going to go to the free throw line. Nice, nice play there by Wooster. A good decision, but again, Miller does a nice job. We see the Web Insurance instant replay. Nice spin by Miller going away from him to draw the contact and find himself at the free throw line. Miller not able to connect on the first. So we have a substitution coming into the game as Wade Ginther comes back in. Keaton Miller, the six foot four senior, lines up his second shot, it's on its way. That one's also no good. Miller comes up empty on that trip. Donaldson pushes it up ahead, Boblet all alone. And this one's going to be fouled. That's a good foul by Keaton Miller. Even though it's going to be his fourth, Boblet was going to have an easy layup if he didn't do that. He was. Taron Boblet got the ball off the transition and attacked the rim again. Great place to be when you're ahead now. A chance to extend the lead with 225. Taron Boblet, Boblet shooting two. Boblet able to connect on the first. Pushes this out to a two-possession game. Coldwater and Allen East waiting in the wings, waiting their turn to come out here for a sectional semifinal. Bluffton and Allen East not ready to end this one yet. 68, 63, 225 left to go. As you see Branson Hilty come back in for the Pirates. It's just been really enjoyable watching both of these punch, counter punch, Rocky, Apollo Creed, Allen East, they've got to, they got to get a punch in here. Deacon Jones. Step back three for Jones. That one short. Boblet with the rebound. And for the first time all night long, Bluffton right now is the one looking to extend leads and feels like they have all the momentum. Yeah, a little panic there maybe with that shot. And then Hirschberger with the quick foul. And if I'm correct, that's his fifth. We see the replay. Hirschberger just grabs the arm of Taryn Boblet. Easy call for the official. Boblet going to the line. Chance to extend the lead here with two free throws. Boblet was perfect his last time down the floor. Connects on that one. Second shot is up. That one is no good. And we're going to have another whistle. And we're going to walk down to the other end and shoot two free throws here for a chance with uh, the clock stop for Allen East to cut into the lead. So Miller will take on another trip to the free throw line as he has struggled here late in this game from the line. Yeah, he's got to regroup here, get, get mentally focused with these two throws to look to cut the lead to four. Able to connect on the first, make this a five-point game. 
See if Alanis picks up full court man-to-man -man or a little zone press again. Down five points. With the miss, hard to set your defense. Going to be man-to-man -man in the half court for the Mustangs. So the lead stays at five. Just over two minutes left to go here in the second overtime. Ginther with the basketball, as I imagine the Pirates right now are just going to try to take as much time off the clock as they can. And this four-corner offense is a staple for Coach Boblet. All of his teams are able to run this effectively. It's not just something that they do two or three times a game. They'll do it every game if the situation presents itself. Donaldson's shot was off. Not sure if that was – I mean, he was wide open, and you know he's a good shooter. Not sure if you would have wanted that shot, though, but Alan East bails them out as Deacon Jones not able to gather the rebound in. It goes out of bounds, and we will have another timeout on the floor. 69-64 in the second overtime. Bluffton on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. With Bluffton taking that quick time out, Nate, after the missed shot and going out of bounds, I'm sure the theme of the timeout for Coach Boblet was, we're up five. We're not down five. We need a 90% shot. No, we're not into holding the ball uh, for a turnover, but we want a great look. Alanis coming out fouling. They're going to make a Bluffton go to the free throw line to try to seal this one. Going to send Carson Soper to the line in the double bonus. Carson Soper steps to the free throw line. First shot is up. He's going to leave it a little short. You got to imagine after two overtimes, you know, everybody's legs feeling a little bit tired. Everybody's energy a little bit drained, kind of working off adrenaline right now. Got to get the legs a little bit underneath them. Soper leaves both of those short, but again, out of bounds as Allen East and not able to gather that one in. And that, that is just a backbreaker right now. You got the free throw shooter to miss both. You've got to come up with that rebound down five with a minute 38. Unable to do so, Bluffton maintains possession. Sober going to trigger the inbounds, gets it inside to Ginther. He's fouled right away as Wade Ginther is going to make a trip to the free throw line. And, you know, this is the Bluffton team on top five right now. At one point in this game, they were down 19, and they are on the verge of a huge comeback and earning a trip to the sectional final. And Ginther is starting to drive some nails, if you will, making free throws, the 72% free throw shooter. Bluffton now up six with a minute 36. Not insurmountable for the Mustangs, but they got to get scores and stops. So stays a two possession game. This one's going to be loose. Jones comes up with it, and he's going to be fouled as Donaldson trying to reach in. And the way that this game is going, I, I'm not going to assume anything until that final buzzer goes off. Yeah, and you appreciate the hustle right there if you're Coach Boblet. That is a hustle foul, but the problem is you're 94 feet away from the other basket, and you committed a foul, and you're going to walk down to the other end. Deacon Jones is going to shoot two. So this is what Allen East needs. They had to find ways to try to score with the clock stopped as Deacon Jones can't connect on the free throw. See Hensley coming back into the game. Jones again, an 84% free throw shooter for the Mustangs. Second free throw is good. Going to have another substitution come in. Number 24, Joe Hole coming into the game for Allen East. As Deacon Jones is going to have a seat. Allen East knows they're going to have to foul. They're trying to make sure that they got the guys can stay on the floor that they need them for the scoring. So we're going to go down to the other end with Merrick Donaldson going to shoot free throws. Allen East fouling right away. 
Still a two possession game as Donaldson now pushes it back out to six points. Has a chance to make this a three possession game. If he can connect here. Yeah. Donaldson, an 80% free throw shooter. That's who you want at the line if you're a Bluff Bluffton Pirate fan. And he does. So Allen East now, they have to come up with points on their offensive possessions. 127 left to go, down seven. They got to have the ball three times on offense. Jones weaves through traffic, gets it off the glass and in. Outstanding move by the freshman right there. Donaldson quickly up into the front court. Looks like he just barely avoided that travel call. Going to have another foul. Carson Soper going to go back to the free throw line. And again, that's one where Coach Bob is like, Merrick, you've got the basketball. Let them foul you. You're one of our best free throw shooters. But he defers to the senior. Carson Soper going to go to the line. As that foul is assessed, I believe it believe it was assessed to Miller as if that's the case, Keaton Miller just fouled out of the game as well. So with Hirschberger at eight points per game and Miller the second leading scorer for Alanis at 13 out of the game now. Alanis challenged to find buckets here a little bit, got to look for a quick shot. Still a two possession game, down six. Jones gets rid of it. Lehman. Deep three-point shot. That one's going to be no good. Fight for the loose ball. Ends up in the hands of Donaldson. And we're going to have a foul call. Merrick Donaldson definitely was not giving that one up. Heard the encouragement from his coach on the previous play to hang on to it. He's going to go to the free throw line and shoot two again. Both teams have just put it on the floor tonight, Nate. They have played extremely hard wanting to get themselves to that sectional championship game. Donaldson makes good on that free throw, gives him 16 points in the game. Behind Soper's 20 for the Bluffton Pirates, makes the second one as well. 75-67, under a minute left to go. Lehman with the quick three-pointer, that one's no good. Boblet with the nice tip out, gonna have another foul. So with 47.6 seconds left to go, the, again, as you said, even the Pirate fans aren't sure about saying, hey, we've got this one under wraps. Too many things can happen, but if Boblet makes these free throws, it's going to be awfully tough for the Mustangs to come back. As Ethan Young has just fouled out for Allen East. Boblet can't connect on the first. So he keeps that door open a little bit for the Mustangs. Second free throw is good. Nine point game. Now Anise has got to go quickly and they've got to have shots fall. Jones, he's going to drive. Gets to the rim. That one's no good. Boblet with the rebound. That one's going to be passed out to Donaldson. And we're going to have a one more foul with 35 seconds left to go. Donaldson going to the free throw line to all but ice this one. Merrick Donaldson does a great job defensively against Deacon Jones. Kept his hands out wide and did not foul Jones on his penetration. Made the shot tough. And as a result, ball ends up back in his hands. And he's at the free throw line where, again, Great place to increase your points per game average, and he's done that here in the late stages of this one, Nate. I don't know that anybody in this gym, even anybody sitting on that Bluffton bench, would have believed you if they, if you would have said at about halfway through that third quarter, hey, you're going to win this one by double digits. But right now, that looks like that's how this one's going to end. Yeah, the Bluffton faithful up off their seats, cheering on their team. They smell the victory now, double overtime, 19 points down. No, they're not Cinderella, but the shoe fits for the Bluffton Pirates tonight. So the winner of tonight's game, whether it be Bluffton that hangs on to or now needs to find some miracle, they're going to play the winner of our second sectional semifinal here at Elida. They will take on the winner of LCC and Coldwater. That game will be back here just in two days. 
And what does that do, whether no matter who walks away from this victory? I mean, right now it looks like Bluffton has this one in hand. But, you know, with the way this one's going, it's too early to call anything. But how do you get your team turned around in two days to come back to play for a sectional final after playing a double overtime game, gassing everybody, playing all the emotions, everything that comes into this one, and then it's, okay, we got to get ready for another game here in two days? Well, it's a great question, Nate, but you're going to be patient. You're going to have a light practice, and you're going to look at a lot of film on, on your next opponent. Maybe look at a little bit on this one, on what you executed well and what you can continue to improve upon. But you want to be real smart about having the guys on the floor too long with the legs that they and the, and the energy they've expended tonight. And Alan East has called off the dogs, if you will. The Bluffton Pirates going to get the W and advance. The Bluffton Pirates, they turn a 19-point deficit into an 11-point victory. It took two overtimes, but the Bluffton Pirates survive and advance and they will move on to play the winner of Coldwater LCC here at the Elida Fieldhouse on a Friday night. Just an outstanding effort. Again, Bluffton knew they could do this because they did it 12 days ago, that being coming from behind to defeat the Mustangs. Coach Boblet didn't go to that trap until the beginning of the fourth quarter. Almost cost him, but that trap was very, very effective in them getting the W. So that is going to wrap that one up here from the Illini Fieldhouse. The Bluffton Pirates come away with a victory. They knock off the Alanese Mustangs 78-67 and move on to the sectional finals. You've been watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner is sponsored by the Stolly Insurance Group. Check out all the highlights from tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse after some conversation. It was a difficult choice tonight. A lot of players stood out, but when it all came down to it, a very deserving victory tonight. Great victory for Bluffton, and we're going to look at our Stolly Insurance player of the game as number zero, Merrick Donaldson. Merrick had the first 10 points of the game for Bluffton, kept them in the game early, and then late he was just outstanding at the free throw line where he finished the contest eight for eight. Total points, 19 for Donaldson. Again, the sophomore did a great job. Carson Soper, the senior, led the Bluffton Pirates as well, but he got the ball to Mark Merrick Donaldson, and Donaldson wanted the basketball, wanted to go to the free throw line where he sealed the deal for the Pirates they're coming back to play in a sectional championship. And when you come away with a victory like the one they did and you come from behind like they did, there are a lot of impressive performances that go into that. But Merrick Donaldson, a very deserving winner tonight of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at the Elida Fieldhouse where the Bluffton Pirates move on to a sectional final as they knock off the Alanese Mustangs 78-67. We would like to thank our entire crew working back in the truck behind the cameras doing everything for us. We appreciate everything that you guys do. One final time for Dave Bowen, I've been Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody. <laughs>